Hey, welcome to my desync build updated for the Dragonhold patch. I'm a little late getting this out, so let's just go ahead and jump right into the gear and get started. Okay, guys, of course we're going to start this build out with New Moon. It's just a ton of damage. And because of the four-piece giving us that extra line of penetration... <clears throat> We can run this in Sharpen and basically cover the same amount of penetration that we had from our Mundus last patch, which is going to allow us to change our Mundus and get some more benefit. Um, even on a direct comparison, if you uh, run Nern and Sharpen, you end up with more damage out of uh, Sharpen. Uh, as far as the glyphs go, uh, we're not getting pulled out of stealth by poison procs, so you can run whatever enchant you prefer. Uh, the chance of getting the extra poison proc is pretty nice. Now, because of the fifth piece also increasing the cost of our active abilities by 5%, we are only going to front bar this set. On our back bar, we're going to run Great Sword of Potentates. Uh, we're going to have it in defending for the extra defense. And the two piece is going to reduce all of our incoming damage from players by 5%. Uh, it's a great way to be able to be in stealth, cloak, get out, and uh, survive with the way this patch is working. Still going to have the one piece of Krogs. All of our armor is going to be in Divines. Uh, stamina and chance on everything. Krogs again, giving us that one piece of penetration. Our shoulder is going to be one piece of Kina. Go ahead and get that extra slot of weapon damage. And our next set is Spriggan's. Now, my total is a little bit lower because I do have one purple. <clears throat> so you will get a little bit more penetration and slightly more weapon damage out of this build if you are in full gold. Alright, for our skills, we're starting out with Killer Blade. Uh, one of the great things this patch is we're no longer having to sell out to just poison damage or just... Uh, physical damage because of new moon uh, being straight weapon damage now we can run both the poison and disease abilities with our uh, physical damage abilities as well so our execute got a lot stronger this patch and again we want to make sure that we're using that on our front attack bar because we want the perks We get the increased spell crit and weapon crit, but hemorrhage. Increase our critical damage by 10%, and then the minor savagery for us and anybody that's in our group. Camouflaged Hunter. We definitely have to have this. Uh, we get that minor berserk that gives us that 8% boost. Um, plus, from the Fighter's Guild passives, uh, the more Fighter's Guild we have, the higher our weapon damage is going to be. Which is why we have Barb Trap on here. Just to get the extra weapon damage from the passives. Silver Shards. Focused Aim. Now, for your ulti, it's going to be up to you. I've been pretty unhappy ever since they added the animation time to Dawnbreaker. So, it kind of really affects the flow of combat for me. Um, the way this patch is, how tanky people are... Uh, I'm engaging a lot more people at max range. 
so toxic barrage even though it keeps us out of stealth longer is what I'm going to be running on back bar our Aldi is going to be temporal guard again we're getting that 8% damage mitigation just from having it slotted even if we don't use it I'm actually uh, really enjoying that combined with the uh, potent taints. It's really helped the survivability on the build. Um, run and rally. Channeled acceleration. Shadowy disguise. Our vigor and concealed weapon uh, just for the movement speed while we're in stealth. Okay, for our Munda Stone, I'm actually switched out from the Lover to the Warrior. Uh, this has helped my heals be a bit bigger, help my survivability. There is a reduction in damage doing this. Um, if you're hitting a target that is tanky and based off of resistance alone, then running the lover will get you more damage. Okay? However, we're already sitting at 13,600 um, penetration. So we would be pushing 18,000 penetration running the lover, which is fine. Again, if you're engaging targets that are straight resistances but as you can see even with this build with potentates and with temporal guard we've added an element of mitigation to our build that doesn't require us to have a ton of resistance and it seems like a lot of the players that i engage have that sort of build now as well um, because of the increased penetration and things like that that's happened this patch and the ease of getting just regular resistance from pots uh, that a lot of people have switched some gear and added just straight mitigation into their build and when you hit targets like that then the weapon damage as opposed to the increased pin is going to help out a lot um, when you're hitting light armor characters that don't have their buffs up or uh you know other night blades that are around and things like that that 18k penetration is definitely going to be over penetrating those characters i think with this character we set it like 11 unbuffed so there's an element to that to make it easier to uh, balance who and what you're hitting however if you find that you know, I play on PlayStation. If on Xbox or PC, people are still using just straight resistance, then definitely switch over to running uh, the Lover Mundus. Uh, for me, my results are better with switching it out and getting the extra weapon damage for my heals and combating the other type of mitigations that are in the game. We are... Uh, always in a stage four vampire i'm staying with lava foot soup for my uh particular build and play style because of the fact that i tend to get focused a lot i tend to draw a lot of people trying to hunt me um i tend to not just gank one person then move on to a different area I, I tend to stay and fight a little bit more um i need the extra recovery um however if you're the type of player that's just going to uh, blow up one player move over to a different area you know and keep that type of uh fighting where you're just ganking and going then you might not need the extra recovery so you could run um 
some of the different foods that give you max stamina and max health to help your survivability or even you know tri stat to get the extra cloaks for your magic and things of that nature uh, for me personally in my play style i have to have the extra recovery All right, for our champion points, starting out with Warlord, 51 points. Uh, our extra points, we just dumped into Sprinter, get us a little bit of uh, cost mitigation on that. 37 into Arcanus, try to help out with our magic recovery. More cloaks. Mooncalf, 56 points. Shade, we're up to 67 points, and Tumbling, 56. For our damage, we're going to start with 72 points into Master of Arms, 64 into Mighty, 62 into Piercing, 72 into uh, Precise Strikes. Now, you could lower this and increase your penetration and bring up another percentage on your mighty if you wanted that would be fine uh, for me like I said I tend to get focused and hunted a lot uh, by groups of people so having that there to also help spike the critical heals uh, for my character is a good bit more beneficial to me For our defense, we're going to start out with 72 into Ironclad, 58 into Resistant, 56 into Hardy, 64 into Elemental Defender, 20 into Thick Skinned, and nothing into the Final Tree. Now, if you've paid attention to a lot of my builds, then you'll know that normally I have points into the resistances. Uh, this patch was so many people building uh, just straight penetration builds uh, for their damage and things of that nature. I went much higher focus on mitigations and went ahead and dropped my resistance total a bit to go ahead and let them over penetrate me and waste damage. All right, everyone, I just want to thank you for taking the time to watch the video and all the support you guys have given me on this channel. It does mean a lot, and I appreciate it. I hope you guys have fun with the build.